What's up? So, I have a Tucson to get checked in. Let's get after it. Let's see what's in here. Alright. This, I can already tell, is going to be the TS-419. I think it's called a Vanguard. And it's got the new YJ-01... V1 steel. So, as a Tucson collector, I just, you gotta get it. So, really nice milling. Ooh, it's got texture too. You can feel it. Very nice. I think I'm gonna like how this feels in the hand. Yeah, really nice milling on there. I mean, just a quick, let's see what's up. Boom. Okay. Yeah, it's lightweight. I already like that blade shape. Hmm. Nice. Let's get rid of all this and we'll get it checked in properly. Take it apart, clean it, degrease it, maybe put a little oil on it. And, uh, yeah. Whew. All right, let's get a towel. Pretty cool. So far, I like it. Great micarta. Woo! Or not, not micarta. Carbon fiber. All right. I'm stupid. We all know. What do I know? Micarta. Carbon fiber. All right. Just another feel. So this carbon fiber is super smooth. Feels really good. Very nice. And then that texture kind of offsets it. I mean... Yeah, it's got a little jimping on top. Let's get another look at the blade. Pretty cool. TS-419, the YJ01-V1. Pretty neat. Of course, I don't know. There's haters that don't like this. Ying Lang... Tucson knives made in Yangzhuan, China. But I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't care. I mean, it's okay to, for it to be made in China. Just some of us don't want them to say that it's from China. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get it apart. Get it checked in. Always like taking this first screw out. What's that about? Yeah, not very tight. No Loctite on it. Pretty clean. Let me clear my work area. Looks like uh, maybe two screws holding it together. Both of them's T8s. So that's kind of good. Bringing the big guns. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get that one out. Maybe not. Let me look a little better. Nah, definitely. That has to come out of there. There we go. Ooh, that's a big one. Nice milled pocket clip recessed into that carbon fiber. Not into the titanium, so not necessarily the best way to do that, but I don't know. I guess if you're going to really put the knife to use, that could become an issue in and out of the pocket um, for a long period of time. If you were going to carry that knife um, a lot, that could make a difference, but I mean... If you're, I guess what I'm saying is this, if you're buying one knife and it's going to be your pocket knife and you're going to run it until you wear it out, then it's not the best design. If you're going to carry them anything like I do as a collector, I carry them for a week or so and I, I put them up and I carry something else and maybe I come back to that knife if it's a good one and I carry it some more, but... 
I don't just carry one knife. I, you know, I have a lot of knives and some of them cost $20 and I really like them. And so I put them back in my pocket at some point. Some of them cost $220 and I like them. So I put them back in my pocket at some point, but I don't, I don't just carry one knife. And, uh, but if you're going to do that, that's, you know, I guess that was the point of all of that rambling there. If you're going to do that, recess in a pocket clip like that, especially with one screw um, into that carbon fiber and not into the titanium, into the liner, it's not a best practice because eventually um, opening and closing and coming in and out of the pocket, let me see if I can illustrate that a little better. So the way that that sits there, you, you end up putting even just the slightest side pressure on that on a regular basis, and eventually it can waller out this carbon fiber. So one screw into that carbon fiber recess like that, it's just not best practice. Is it going to cause a problem? Maybe not. I'm not, I'm not saying 100%. The way that I carry knives, the way that I just described, I may carry it and not carry it again for a long time. Um, it probably won't cause me a problem. If it's going to be your everyday knife for the next six months or a year, it, it may waller itself out. Nice detent ball. Yeah, great. I'm pretty sure that the scale comes off, but it's not coming off easy, so I'm going to leave it be. Just a little more clean up here. We'll get it put back together, lube it properly, run it through its paces, maybe take a final look at the action and the fit and finish, see what we think about it. Yeah, pretty nice. A titanium backspacer. It's got a spot in there for a lanyard. I have a few lanyards. Um, and I've got a couple of, I, I would say, show knives, I guess, that have lanyards on them. But they pretty much came with a lanyard. Um, putting a lanyard on a knife, I don't think I've ever done it. Now, I did get a Spyderco a while back, and so I bought a Spyderco bead. I think it's actually hanging over here. Let me, I'm going to grab it, only because I mentioned it, so I'm going to grab it. But I don't have it on a knife. I don't remember which Spyderco I bought, um, but I thought, hey, I'm going to buy that lanyard, that bead thing, and I'm going to put it on there. So it's this thing. Yeah. And then I never put it on the knife. So maybe I will. I don't know. Um, and, and maybe it's one of those things that once I tried it, I'd really like it, like grabbing the knife out of my pocket and it's got a lanyard on it. Maybe I should try it before I talk it down and go, yeah, it's really not me. It, what do I know? I'm stupid, man. I, you know, I should try one. And then once I try it, I may love it. Um, I have that little dangly thing sticking out of my pocket that I can grab onto. Uh, when I want to access my knife. So this blade here, that choil ends way back there. So there's a, a ton of room to sharpen here. And that really comes into play for me using the WorkSharp Elite uh, belt attachment as my sharpening system because it's it's really hard to not create a smile and back in here 
with that system. If that's even kind of close, it's going to catch it. So a lot of my knives have that, uh, they, you know, called a smile back there, a little polished area. I don't let it bother me too much. If the knife's sharp, I'm good to go. And, uh, I'm not really a collector that's, um, that, you know, is looking at, hey, I've got a knife like that and it costs $300 or whatever, and it's got a smile on it, so now the blade's ruined. I, you know, I, I'm not, I haven't sold any of my knives. I don't know if I ever will. I mean, I just keep buying more storage and cases and, places to put them and and uh i lose track of all of them and then one day i go oh man i forgot all about this case these are awesome and uh so i just i i enjoy them and i'm not really looking to sell them so that little smile thing doesn't seem to you know it doesn't bother me much pretty sure that's the way that goes um there's probably a couple of these that hold all that in there There's one, and I think the other one is just a pin. Mm -hmm. Nope. Come on now. Making me work for it. Let's uh let's do this this time. Let's get it down on the table so I don't keep dropping that out of there. There's one pin there and the other one here. There we go. Pretty sure I did this bearing, but I'm gonna just make sure and hit it again. I'm going to put the tiniest little drop of oil behind that little racetrack bearing washer just to give that something to encourage it to slide if it needs to. Alright, let's get this pivot pin in here. There we go. Almost lost that one again. It's challenging me. But we're getting there. It's all dried off and cleaned up. I will say, um, off the top here, this knife came really clean. I mean, it came oily and it had some stuff on it. But I have to admit that it does not appear to have been dirty. And so that's a cool thing. I mean, so let's say all the knives started coming clean. Because, you know, I get clean knives occasionally. Would I stop taking them apart? I don't think so. I don't mind taking them apart, even the complicated ones. Now, I get into some less expensive knives that, you know, after I take them apart, I kind of go, ooh. I probably shouldn't have taken that apart because they're not, sometimes you can get a, a budget knife, a less expensive knife. How about, how about I just say a cheap knife? Sometimes you can get a cheap knife and they are not built to take apart. And once you take them apart, you know, once they're put together, I think the purpose of the knife is to stay together. Like it's never meant to come apart. And uh, taking them apart can be problematic. Um, so I run into that sometimes, but I just got to be patient putting them back together and, uh, you know, work with whatever I find when I'm doing it. Because sometimes I do kind of run into, oh, I shouldn't have taken that apart. Um,
But this has gone together well. I don't see any complications here. Yeah. Let's uh, back this out and then I'll put a little tension on it and see where it is. Yeah, drop shot. Boom. Get past that, that detent. And a uh, little bit of coaxing to get her down. Let's check. Yeah, absolutely nothing there. Nothing here, here, or this way. Very solid. Yep. Yeah, so it's one of those for sure. It falls shut. Got a great sharpening choil. Uh, great access here, I'm noticing. Easy to get in there. It's got the lanyard hole. It's one of those springy clips. Nice end on it. Uh, this is out of the way. I don't foresee this grabbing my pocket at all. Um, matter of fact, I'm just going to throw it in there. I always kind of thought, what's the point of talking about a pocket clip if you haven't put it in your pocket real quick? And uh, yeah, that's very easy in, very easy out. No issues there. And this action is just wonderful. And once those bearings uh, cut cut its lines on the blade side this thing's just going to get smoother and smoother so yeah just wonderful I'm pretty definitely catch that i don't even think i'm going to try but uh, yeah that ain't going to go and no that ain't going to go either so this is this is really a one one run operation here this back flipper but it's a good one i like it yeah, very nice. Nice blade, nice kind of a stone wash, maybe a satin finish on there. Looks good. Great carbon fiber. And this milling. And I didn't show it before, but just the tiniest little milling on that pocket clip. Yeah, and now that that screw's tight, I mean, there's no play in that. So all that talk about the pocket clip, I don't think it's consequential yeah I don't think it means anything so let's check a couple of things and I'll wrap this video up so number one does it cut got me a little piece of phone book paper here yeah I mean I'm not going to complain and I don't think I'm going to do anything to it I'm just going to leave it be that that dude that dude will cut so I'm not gonna mess with that let's check for the thing that I love to find let's check that Tucson curse and then I'll wrap this video up hey before I check for that curse let's talk about what I paid for this knife so this was one of those man that I had to chase for a long time and uh, I kept putting bids on this thing on eBay, and d -Win kept posting new knives, and I believe they're still posting them. You know, he sells one, and then he relists one. And uh, I chased this one for, I mean, months, maybe. Definitely month, but months, I think. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I want to give away all my eBay secrets, but... Um, I just kept, I just kept pursuing this one, but there was only a point that I was willing to go with it. And I ultimately picked this up for under $160 on an auction. And, uh, they were going for $175, $180, $190. And, and so I was able to secure this one in the 150s. Uh, I do have some oil leaking out from behind those scales, so I may have to at some point take them off because that'll that'll drive me nuts where they leak all the time. Um, may have to get them scales off and get that oil from back behind there. But yeah, so $150, $150s, uh, the TS419 Tucson, great action, great milling, 
great titanium, great carbon fiber, um, solid knife, good in the hand. Uh, got the jimping here on the top. When I get a, a strong grip with my thumb digging in, uh, this jimping is grabbing me in the front. Come on now. It's grabbing me in the front. And this jimping is grabbing my thumb. So super nice, strong grip. I, no, no hot spots. I do feel the clip and uh, kind of this edge coming in here but nothing of any concern. So, yeah, really nice knife. I like it. And, uh, I, oh, this oil, look at, look at it coming out of them scales with me squeezing it. I'm definitely going to take it apart. I'm not going to waste y'all's time with that, but, uh, I'm not going to move on. I'm going to take it apart right now, wipe all that oil out of there, um, so that I've got dry scales. But, uh, uh anyways, Tucson TS 419. I really like it. I think it's a great knife. Um, I think if you're patient on eBay, you can pick it up for a good price. And uh, it'll be interesting to see all of the the steel guys, the metallurgists, and the guys that test this stuff to find out what's really going on with the steel. Uh, I've heard some good things about it, and uh, I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. Anyways, Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Okay, quick little update uh, or addendum. But I got distracted by the oil and the scales and I didn't check it. So let's, let's take a look for these contact points. And so, yeah, I don't, unfortunately... I can touch that blade without any real effort the whole length of that opening. Yep. And so, 100%, if this was down in my pocket like this, and for whatever reason, I reached in and got my finger across the front of that blade into that spot I would be cut yeah that's not a kind of contact that's for my my finger I'm cut on that blade right there it's exposed so out of the two Tucson curses man this one's got the first one it's dangerous um let's check the second one See if I can get that tip. And I cannot. I'm not even going to mess around and try a bunch. But this one's down deep enough and it's protected that I can't catch that. So, you know, it's going to get a pass here. But this is a fail. Um, am I still going to put this in my pocket and carry it around? I mean, to be fair, I probably am. But that doesn't change the fact that you know, here's a, here's a $150 knife with new, what, what is it called? Uh, YJ01 V1 steel that's supposed to be, uh, high grade steel. It's got great carbon fiber, milled titanium. I mean, excellent materials amazing action that I mean will just rival up there with you know knives that cost two three times what this one will cost and if you add the materials I mean golly this knife could easily be three to five hundred dollars I mean now the steel's experimental but then you take all that and you go yeah but it's got a flaw and it's pretty fatal, man. Like, like I shouldn't be able to contact that blade in there like that because, honestly, then what's the point? It might as well just be a fixed blade with no sheath in my pocket because that can cut me, you know? It's like carrying a gun with no safety and no trigger guard in your pocket. I mean, I guess it's not quite that severe, a cut finger doesn't equal like a you know a gunshot wound but 
Yeah, I mean, bummer. But it definitely has one of the two curses and it's got it bad. So here's a great knife that I really like that I have to say it's got a dangerous uh, design flaw on it. So there's that knife. I mean, I, I call it the way I see it. Um, I hope you appreciate the video and enjoyed watching. Have a great day.